All right, welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, Chapter One. Um, where were we? We had just finished Blindsided, um, wherein we had accused Mr. Von Kram of the murder because he had the motive, means, and opportunity against our other main suspect, Mag Magda von Staub, the deceased's sister. John's diary led us to believe he wasn't quite sure, um, but uh, I am reasonably uh, certain that the game provided me with evidence, and I think my analysis of that evidence is correct. So if that is indeed not the correct solution, uh, then I take no responsibility for it. But now we are going to do a sacrificial lamb, and we are looking for across uh, Turquoise Lane, across from Cordona Abbey, Northern Grand Saray, for a Mr. Vogel. Grand Saray. Here's Turquoise Lane, here's the Abbey, so hereabouts. The closest fast travel. <laughs> Excuse me. Is the theater. Um, there, this way. Oh, we gotta go through the park. Who's this statue here? Interesting statue. It's an interesting fish motif. It's decidedly eastern, and yet the statue itself decidedly western. Anyway, moving on. Um, is this the place? So that's the abbey, so this place. going on here oh this is where I got the outfit from the outfit that I saw last time um, this that's what this is about I got it for this quest okay all right hello hello Manchio's mansion interesting interesting Okay. Let's go, I guess. Welcome, sir. I do hope you enjoy yourself. Why do all of the servants in this game sound like they're just seconds from crying all the time? My head is vibrating. Okay. I've concluded my seizure. I think we deserve a rest. Enjoy the evening, sir. There is still plenty of time before the grand finale. All right. Grand finale. Oh my goodness, what kind of party is this? What have I stumbled into here? This reminds me of some of the... Uh, Lovecraftian detective games that are in my library. I considered recording a series on, but to be honest with you, they are often quite slow in their pacing and then quickly ramp up and end abruptly. What if I write an article about these people here? Can you help me gather information about Cordona's elite? Write an article about them? gather information about them? You want to blackmail these people, John? What the fuck? This guy sponsors an orphanage, and he's friendly. Affable whiskey critic. Well, he's an occultist, but, you know, that's... Doesn't make him a bad person. Just his personal religious beliefs, I suppose. You know what was here before Manchio's family bought it. Affable secret society member. Oh, I can eavesdrop. The eerie history of the mansion. 
Cultist Architect Magic Circle. Okay. Um, no ruins, no fraud. Mysterious disappearance. No ancestral home. No auction. Cultist architect in magic circle. Before Mankio's family, the mansion was owned by an occultist architect. He dedicated his life to conducting a powerful ritual from the Forgotten Tome, but the ordinary magic circles proved too weak for it. That was why he built this mansion. A keen eye might notice that its shapes correspond with certain magical symbols and some walls have cavities. One day the architect simply disappeared and ash stain on the floor was all that remained. Perhaps he was successful in his endeavor. That's what I like about this party. Bring me more dirt, Sherry. One more piece and I can expose these base hedonists. What? <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? They don't seem like bad people. I haven't seen any evidence at all that they're doing anything wrong. The fuck is wrong with you? I don't know if I want to help you, John. Sounds like you have terrible thoughts. Oh, what about this guy right here? Okay, he's a flat earther. Him you can destroy. Social anxiety. <sighs> Sleeps on his stomach. A fan of syncopation. John, these are normal, innocent people who... <sighs> Curtains do not guarantee privacy. Meanwhile, you're some creepy you specter. Despite being ethereal. But he is a figment of my imagination, so I suppose if he wants to destroy these nice people, so do I. Doesn't that follow? These medieval botany and chemistry books look even more satanic than the occult ones. That's hindsight for you. It's true. Practices of the past are positively barbaric, but Romantic we benefit from history and they don't. Someone's in touch with their feelings. Codex Orcus. Why does this occult book sound like a flower? Because it is. About flowers, I mean. Um, there's more. Uh, you don't want to get too far away. Well known and recent plays to keep up to date with the current trends. <laughs> One of these books must open a secret passage. I know it. You're a fucking lunatic. Ah. Uh, you're talking to yourself. Here, let me at least make you look like you're not crazy. There we go. Now I can... There you go. Just go ahead. No, you just look less less crazy now. Looks like we're having a conversation. It's fine. What about these ones? Polyglot. John, this one speaks multiple languages. Quick. Put her down. Plays cricket of all the things. What's back here? Mancio's had to enforce the masks after the scandal. Scandal, huh? Identity disclosure scandal. Okay. Offended Duchess political crisis. Cheating room. Okay. People described a scandal from a previous party. Vice Governor Coden was found by his wife to be a Prussian duchess in the company of young men. Although the marriage was intended to be a political one, the emotions of the duchess were real. The incident instigated a political crisis between Cordona and Prussia. Although there were only a few notes of protest, the governor fired his protege. I'll pin them down with this scoop. Don't. Thank you, Sherlock. Don't. That's... These people aren't doing anything wrong. It's certainly none of your business. Why? Psychopath. God. Oh 
All right, moving on. Sherlock. Oh God, Friend. it's Vogel. I wasn't sure you'd come. Verna, I uh, see you are not yourself. The more time you spend here in Cordona, the more I feel it my duty to bring you into our world and show you all we have to offer. Please resist and the impulse. what is on offer today? Pleasure, indulgence, relief, and relaxation. You've earned some time for yourself, have you not? Who God, would say I'm a fucking big. creep. <laughs> Nonsense. I refuse to believe there is anyone permitted to know Sherlock Holmes. Huh. You may be right. Then free yourself from inhibition and expectation. The night is young, and so are the guests. You should try to enjoy both. Creep. It's not healthy for handsome men to spend every night alone, and certainly not in a house filled with such melancholic memories. I must admit, my travels have proven more taxing than expected. I'm less confident in my life and myself. Time of relaxation seems a distant dream. So can I tempt you with a physical aid to your moral consolations? There's why well, I'm not taking anything you give me. Or perhaps an artificial paradise? No. Yes, something more spiritual. A potentiated not because I'm against mind. the substances. I'm against Seven taking anything you give me, you well, fucking weird telling, creep. But you must try it. No. <laughs> no. My mind already operates at a far higher level than most. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't Struggle care how arrogant I sound uh, to refuse. My I'm going to refuse. to provide the world with truth, and I do that perfectly well as is. Duty? You've never cared about that before. How do you know? Of course you don't I know do. me. Exposing a lie, revealing a fact, that is a moral responsibility. <laughs> That's not morality. Morals are what happens afterwards when truth collides with consequence. Do you ever follow up on cases you solved? Do you ever see what happened next? Visit the victims? Ensure justice is served in the courts? And how do you choose where to direct your attention? Are there not deserving causes to which your brilliance could be applied but isn't? You ascribe me more power than I possess. I have a narrow skill set and work within that mandate. What occurs afterward is irrelevant. With every action or inaction, you place a finger on the scales of morality. Many in the city would see you as abdicating your responsibility. Yeah, I, I haven't. Not me, of course. Morality is subjective, it's just really like not. truth. There is and neither is truth. There is from indulging in it, and far better things to indulge in. What are now you I arguing? I insist on easing any burdens I've placed upon your shoulders. Show yourself a kindness, and try this rather delectable concoction. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand Vogel correctly. What he's saying is because I'm not, or because, let's generalize this, because a person, any person, cannot do everything, then it's a moral failing to do anything. Essentially, unless you are in complete control, then you have no control. That is obviously utter bullshit, okay? All anyone can do is the best they can to influence their sphere. You know, your arms only reach a certain distance. And to say that because you can't affect everything that you shouldn't do what you can where you are is obviously complete trash, utter, complete nonsense. And, and, and to say that because you can't, you might as well throw your hands up and just enjoy yourself is also bullshit. Uh, Sherlock here, just as any one of us, you know, we have certain certain gifts, certain things that we can do, certain talents, certain even desires, you know, to 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 want to affect our environment to one degree or another, and we 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 can, we can only do what we can do, yeah. And the fact that he's conflating morality and truth as being malleable, they're not. They're they're just not. Right. Uh, even even if there is a subjectivity to both of those things, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. So no, I'm still not taking anything you give me, Vogel. You're this a weird creep, and you're also kind speaking, of an idiot. Then, well, perhaps it would be puerile to overlook an opportunity to study it. I'll take it with me. Yes, Sherlock. Very good. And now, our evening begins in earnest. <laughs> I just remembered. 
I'm sorry, Sherlock. My mind's delightfully impaired. Please take this key. It opens the altar room, past the library. Pardon? Altar room? What now, Verna? Go quickly and find our Fabio. Only you can make him talk. I'll join you in a minute. There's something wrong with you. I mean, there's something to be said for occasionally letting loose and relaxing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that either, but... Uh, anyway, I'm not going to sit here and moralize and pontificate. Certainly not with a character from a video game, but... He's wrong. I hope you know that. All right. Past the library is that that room we saw to the, to the north here. Oh, hey, it's a painting from before. Ogle's gallery has a backer, I see. Oh, did you hear that guy? Oh, did you hear that guy? That, that, honestly, Vogel was upsetting before, but I'm actually genuinely upset now. I'm actually genuinely upset right now. The fact that, that Sherlock didn't put him in his place back there is, is kind of upsetting. That, that it's just so... transparently manipulative that it actually bothers me. Assuming this is the way. Okay. Oh my god. Was he here this whole time? Tattoo of butterfly, contusion to the head, stab wound to the thorax. Can I change John's wardrobe? No. Okay. Because I keep getting him confused with the NPCs. There's too many sailors in the game. I need to change him. Alright, and now Vogel has led me to a body with little to no warning, making it seem as if it's a game. Vogel's the villain of this game. I've known it all along. Alright, we have fountains with a... It's meant to be a Greco-Roman motif, but if you look at where the fountains are coming out, that looks like a variation on a green man, which is a Celtic symbol, and rather than a lion, it appears to be a wolf overhead. We have a box in the corner, incense burners, There's a room over here where I see a hookah. Okay, this is a strange room, obviously. But, I mean, we've got crown molding. This is decorated to look like this. The fact that it's not full of smoke is obviously because this is a video game. Rose petals, blue cloth. They're meant to be occult symbols. Some of them actually are symbols, and some of them are not. Let's start with this, I suppose. The herbs here are salvia divinorum. They have a slight hallucinogenic effect to emphasize the ceremony. Yep, and a case for the dagger. This elaborate box must be for the ritual dagger. The ointment smells mouse-like. I presume it is an aphrodisiac prepared from a Spanish fly. Mm. The ointment smells mouse-like. That's I already did that one. I, I wanted the one next to it. I presume it is an it. aphrodisiac prepared from a Spanish fly. The ointment smells. Oh. This oil has there a slight go. aroma of flowers and olive. So we've got. Spanish fly, flowers and olive, and salvia. All right. Um, these symbols. This one looks like a twisted symbol of Venus, drawn in a hurry. I mean, it is something of a symbol of Venus, but we've got these dots that don't belong in that symbol. The script itself. 
I don't recognize. I'm not a language expert, but uh, also just from the arrangement of symbols, this doesn't look like language to me. So, for example, if this were like for for example a substitution cipher using a special character set, I don't see um, repeating letters or um, even word formations. Um, I mean, we have six characters, six characters, six characters four characters and then a mismatch of characters six characters so it looks more like window dressing than anything else um i mean and obviously these are fake <laughs> so which is neat but and the symbol of mars the sign reminds me of the astrological symbol for mars again after a fashion after a fashion um yeah they don't i mean some of these are alchemical symbols I do see some resemblance to other characters that I know, but not enough to draw a direct comparison. The Slabizon has flower motifs. Here we have a sun. Nope, that's a daisy. We have a rose. There's nothing at the front. So we have a pseudo green man and flowers. So. I'm going to start before I examine the body by going here. I can't actually walk around. I think the pillows are preventing me from actually walking. Cohiba. Enough cigars to burn down the entire mansion. And one of them is still smoldering. We're not going to make note of that. Okay. Uh, well, here's that riding crop. Why don't people tidy up after themselves? Well, you know. Oh. Blood. Blood. A sturdy bottle met a not-so-sturdy human. It didn't break only because it was unopened. Yes, and he does have a contusion on his head. Oh, there... Okay, I thought there would be more. And a blood stain. An open wound spoiled the carpet. Okay, so the smoking lounge here. They were partying and... Somebody grab the bottle. Bobbled him. Nothing over here. Nothing over here. Nothing over here. John. Okay, can I go through here? Oh, I can. There's some room. The pitcher is empty, but with puddles around it. So it was used. And blood, blood clots are adhered to the sides of the drain. Hmm. Okay. Missing robe. Identical to the robes the guests are wearing. This is a different ritual. I found a scenario of some sort of ritual with a remark written at the beginning. It says, read and rehearse this rite, Manchios. And a good woman lies on the altar in a bit of flowers symbolizing Mother Gaia. The one who leads the ritual oils the body of the woman to awaken her inner fertility. Participants should chant at this moment and call for the man who can please Mother Gaia. Then the man who will impersonate the principle of life may come and engage in sexual congress with her. Doesn't say anything about stabbing anyone. Don't ignore the guests, Matista, and stop boring them. They don't want to hear about your stupidities. They want to feel how beautiful they are and how generous you can be towards them. You are here to please and celebrate life. Remember, each guest paid a great deal to be with you. How can anyone accept such behavior? You tell me, John. A useful tool for a disguise arsenal. Okay. Mm it's also just makeup, but all right. Props, decorations, and tools for a more detailed set. Okay. For my Fabio. Handcrafted and luxurious cufflinks. There's also a note. For my Fabio. Banchos. F. The key is similar to the one that Vogel gave me. 
The key is similar to the one that Vogel gave uh -huh. me. The capital F on the key fob might refer to Fabio. Would you recognize me in one of these? I suppose not. Okay. Similar to the guests' robes, apart from the uh, blood right. Get to the body in a second. I'm just going to check back here. Okay, let's do the body. Head wound. A blunt force trauma may have suffered an internal hemorrhage. Tattoo covers a mark. This crew slave tattoo branding. partially covers a slave branding. Okay. In pain. The victim has clenched the fabric so firmly in his fist that it's nigh impossible to remove it. This worm like sigil has been drawn with his own blood. This golden handle has a blood stain on it. Alright, so the blade is relatively short. The handle, well, especially relative to the handle, it's a gold. Seems to be a horned, spined snake of some kind. Armor plates, it's very Geiger esque. Six eyes. The dagger is heavy and sharp, but lacks balance. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it's definitely not a functional knife. It's definitely ritualistic. The wound is deep. A precise strike reached the heart. He died right here. Okay. All right. Um. I'll need to go back there and do the concentration thing on the smoking lounge. And this one I need to talk to somebody about. Fabio was sacrificed on the altar during a cult ritual. I don't really know about that just yet. He appears to have been, but... It also doesn't appear the ritual that they were preparing for. Alright, so we did that. Now we do this. A bloody handprint. A person leaned against the doorframe. They left a smudged trail of blood. That is a right hand, so... Mm. When did you show up? The wounded person was here for some time. And a left a hand. bloody handprint on an armchair. There appear to be no further traces leading to the altar. Hmm. So I don't think maybe that's not Fabio. Maybe Fabio would try to defend himself. <sighs> okay, Volvo, you fucking creep. What do you have to say? Werner, care to explain what is going on here? On nights like these, it's not unusual for some attendees to get a little... exuberant. It's part of the appeal. Unfortunately, it appears things have gotten out of hand. Yes, some are more prone to bend the rules of morality. That's murder. I doubt there's anything left to bend. Why did you not tell me immediately? We were chatting about trivial matters for some time. If I'm completely honest, Sherlock, I've consumed a rather potent cocktail of substances. My attention slips and drifts, but I'm glad I thought to call for you. You sent me a disguise. Oh dear, did I? Well, since I found the body, Mr. Manchios has agreed that you can investigate the matter. 
I promise my mind will behave itself going forward. No. It All right. Won't. Pull yourself together, Verna. This is a perfect example of how wrong he was before. Because his entire ethos of, you know, nothing matters, so enjoy your time here, is exactly. Let me look at what's happened. Okay. He doesn't use his talents to better influence the place around him. Instead, he, you know, focuses on having fun and so on. And that's all well and good. But the result is that things like this happen and he needs someone to come in and save his ass. Somebody who he says is essentially doing life wrong, right? What is it about these nights that you are so eager to share with me? Well, they're not always in the evenings, but they are in the shadows. People gather to test their boundaries in a safe and consensual atmosphere. Often with more stains than your typical crime scene. But that is the point. Who are we to judge? I suppose that's fair. What about today, then? Was anything different? Well, I was invited as a special guest. It was supposed to be a time of both divine and carnal pleasures. A scratch for every unconventional itch. I imagine you're reeling from your shattered expectations. On the contrary, there is still spectacle, stimulation and release, merely in a different form. I like to let life entertain me. Or death. Yeah, I'm sure Fabio feels the same way, Vogel. I'm glad that he could be entertainment for you. Who is Manchios? Mr. Manchios is the owner of the manor, yes? And the host of Cordona's most memorable parties. He promises even the ugliest guest a partner for the night. And for the ones with more unconventional tastes, Mr. Manchios provides other services. What a caring person. You cannot begin to imagine. Have you thought about maybe contacting the police? The police remain unaware of this tragic event? Some of them may be hiding behind their masks. They conceal many things. But we didn't want the authorities to create more problems. Besides, after a few cocktails, their incompetence will have soared to new heights. How do you know I even want the case? I promised you relaxation. If there's one thing I know about you, Sherlock, it's that nothing soothes you more than a good mystery. You're the villain. You're definitely the villain. How did you discover the body? In between guzzles of alcohol? I was set to perform in a fecundity ride with Fabio and came to inquire further. It was a staged ritual where he was to play the principle of life. And the rehearsal was unsuccessful? Ha! Huh. Who knows? I found him alone on the altar, his blood dripping to the floor. And then? Then I called Mr. Manchios. He was panicking, so I told him about you. We left the room and locked the door. Then we were... Filling time. Waiting for you was stressful. We indulged in some simple comforts. Overindulged, perhaps. I should leave right now. I should not help with this. I should go contact the police. Were you well acquainted with Fabio, the victim? Everyone knew Fabio, or wanted to. His beauty was the talk of the island. Too handsome to go unnoticed. He was magnetic. Fat wallets fought for the privilege of having him. He offered the pleasures of performance, and more. Okay, you locked the room after you discovered the body. Was it open before that? When you that? discovered the body, was the door open? No, it was locked. Oh, that reminds me. It's a minor detail, but the first time I came to speak to Fabio, I left without entering, having been unable to open the door. You didn't have the key? No, I had it. Don't look at me like that. I was mostly sober. I suspect there was a key in the other side of the door, blocking the lock. That detail may very well be major, Werner. Well done. So you returned later, only to find the lock was not blocked? Correct. After an hour had passed, I tried again and was able to unlock the door. That's when I discovered poor, handsome Fabio. Okay, what's this fecundity ritual? What about the fertility ritual? There was something about Fabio being a... Principle of life. Fabio was supposed to portray the beauty of life's origin. Flowers, oil, not this travesty that seems straight out of the Inquisition. So this ritual is not the fertility rite. What was it meant to look like? It begins with a woman lying naked in a flower bed on the altar. She represents Gaia, the earth. 
As I cover her in oils, we chant for the principal. As our calls reach a climax, Fabio enters and copulates with her. After he finishes, I stab her with a dagger. That part's just pretend, of course. But the intercourse is not? I did not expect you to be such a prude. Are you a virgin? It is nothing to be ashamed of, but it would explain the color of your cheeks. Fuck the you. Right marks the start of our festivities. The principle of life is beautiful, intimate, essential. It must not be stopped. <sighs> Yet it appears that someone did stop it. What about the naked woman? Can you tell me anything about her? Oh, yes, Matista. She's one of Fabio's compatriots and a performer, too. I haven't seen her today, actually. So, Sherry, do you have any ideas about the case? Perhaps, perhaps. I think I can deduce what happened here. Hmm, okay. Matista. Door was locked. The first time he tried to enter, according to Vogel, Fabio was a performer and entertainer for the rich guests. Matista was Fabio's fellow artist, and she works with him. And the letter that we saw. Don't ignore the guests. I want to feel how beautiful they are and how generous you can be towards them. Okay. Doesn't seem like she didn't necessarily. She wasn't necessarily a willing participant here. It just seems more like they had a problem with her talking about other "quote unquote" uninteresting things. All right, let's see what we got. Let us start <clears throat> by the door. So the key was in the lock, so he couldn't open it. Could have been Fabi, or it could have been the mystery person. I think it makes more sense for it to be the mystery person to ensure that they had privacy. I don't think that it was Fabio who was injured because they were here for a while. I think those are my only choices. But that is a left hand print, and they're showing his right hand, so it must have been yes, this. And that's a left hand. Um, he definitely wasn't stabbed here. Let me see with the bottle here. That seems right. Yep. Get with the bottle. Okay. Um, then we have. Him washing the blood off? Nope, it would have been the killer. And then stashing the bloody robes. It's really making it seem like he did this to himself? I don't think so. And then the actual murder. Nope, it was not with the bottle. And he was not strangled. He was stabbed. I think that's it. The bottle was used as a weapon during a scuffle in the smoking lounge. Then, to ensure no one would interrupt, the murderer locked the door. The unconscious body of the victim was moved to the altar room. Once the body was on the altar, the murderer thrust the dagger into the victim's heart. Symbols were drawn with the blood. The wardrobe was used to hide the bloodied robe from anyone's eyes. The killer washed himself and took a clean robe from the hangar before leaving. Are you all right? You're on the floor, not moving. I think I know what happened here. Okay. was in possession of a key. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Elio was killed in a ritual murder. Uh, the ritual was staged. It was a cover for the true murder motive. I believe that that is the case, at least for now. And there's no other connections to make. Case book. Okay, let's ask Vogel about the keys. He did say he had a key. I'm starting to put the pieces together. Fabio was stabbed. I see nothing gets past you, Werner. Yes, he was stabbed, but only after being knocked out in the next room and placed here. I do not yet know why. So who's responsible? Well, it was one person working alone, and the murderer has now donned a robe. He or she could be hiding in plain sight. We have lost time, Werner, but your discretion may prove to be a benediction after all. Okay. Um... Who had a key? The murderer had to have access to this room. After the crime, he used his own key to lock the door. So, who had the key to the altar room? I'm not sure. As a special guest, I was provided one by Mr. Manchios. He should be able to tell you of any others. Where can I find him? Most likely in the main hall, entertaining his guests. He has a mask with golden stars. You can't miss him. But please be discreet. We don't want to risk disturbing the revelry. I don't give a fuck about the revelry. Somebody is dead here, Verk. Okay. Oh my god, I this whole game is full of people who are absolutely insane. Gold stars. Harlequin, 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 Harlequin. Oh goodness, Sherlock, they made a blood fountain. No, John, it's definitely not blood, just wine. The whore, is it a guess? Blood? What the hell? Harlequin, Harlequin, oh there he is. Gold stars. Kurt Manchios, I presume. I'm Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you must be the one Werner told me about. What a sweet voice you have. It must belong to a handsome young man. Can I call you Sherlock? As you wish, Mr. Manchios. Mr. Vogel asked me to help you. The body in the altar room requires answers, and quickly, I suspect the murderer to still be here. What? Lower your voice. I don't want anyone to hear us. I can't believe you're trying to cover this Did up. Did you know Fabio well? People are starting to look at us, Sherlock. Change the subject. I can't believe what happened to him. To me. Such oh, yes. Poor you. Think what it means for me. A wonderful evening for so many good, influential, and rich people has been ruined. I have betrayed all my promises of exotic delights. I don't understand. Surely a murder would affect your reputation to a greater extent. Please, isn't this why you are here? I thought you were a silent magician. Do your tricks and make it go away. Holy shit, you don't know me at all. No, that's not what I do. And I can't believe that you're thinking about what'll happen to you because this ruined your party. Oh my god, I am definitely going to blow the lid off I this need thing. to find all those who had the key to the altar room. As far as I know, Mr. Vogel, Fabio, and you had access to it. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Also, Matista and Santos. Who's Santos? Santos? Who is that? Santos Pinchetti, my major domo, in his opinion at least. Okay, where are they? I'd like to speak to Mr. Pinchetti and Matista. Do you have somewhere I might have a private conversation with them? Of course, of course. Let me think. Matista is entertaining the guest somewhere, and Santos... Oh, yes. He will be busy with the servants. Or the cook. What's that noise? What's going on? Freeze, filth. You're under arrest. Huh? What's going on? What the f What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what
what the hell is going on? It's you. Committed a crime, and now I have to free you, kiss your hand, and apologize for the inconvenience. To a great... I did tell you that Mr. Vogel and I were innocent. I emphasized it in my statement. Your statement? Thanks to some bigwigs who work for the so-called good of the country by releasing fleas like you. Thank God we have Vogel in his letter. Once I get to that goldfish, I'll... Bigwig? Oh, my wretched brother Mycroft and his long nose. Wait, did you say Mycroft? Mycroft Holmes? Are you the youngest son of Violet Holmes, rest her soul? You knew her? You knew my mother? Not personally, no. Not exactly. I was working on the paperwork for that case. Would you happen to remember anything of the events? Well, I didn't make the inquiry, but I remember seeing some notes. Why? Um... Tell me what you know, I'll tell you what I know. Perhaps we can negotiate. I could be quite useful. Huh. Got you hooked, right? You know what? Stark and the others think they're the smartest here, thanks to you. Let me get this straight. Are you listening to me, lad? I'm all ears. Take this case. Report to me only, to Constable Harvey Oswald. I'll leave everything I have on this table. Find the murderer. Be a real copper. Question the suspects, make them sing, give me something substantial. And if Mr. Vogel is not a suspect? If he's innocent, then you can take your favourite degenerate away from here. If you slip or mess with the evidence, then trust me, your brother won't save you from my bludgeon. Meanwhile, I'll be checking the archive for you. If anybody asks, then you're a consulting detective. Let's make a start, then. Partner. Okay, that was a... I'm glad we managed to get the scoop before the raid. It was a interesting turn of events. That voice actor uh, who was just playing the part of the officer, he's been a couple of other characters in this game so far. He has a peculiar idiosyncrasy with the way he talks. You can tell it's him because uh, he often sharply inhales before delivering each line. He'll, he'll go <laughs> before he speaks every line. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying it's distinctive. Um, and I also have the same sort of idiosyncrasy, which is how I noticed it to begin with. All right, that was uh, that was interesting. Um, now we have new evidence that we haven't yet discovered, but cufflinks didn't have a chance to talk to Matista or Santos. Um, yes, I think he should be one of the primary suspects, to be honest with you. Um, hi, Santos Pinchetti. I'm a witness who reports a suspicion of murder at Mancho's mansion in Grand Saray. During the preparations for the social party, I heard loud noises from the closed altar room. Immediately, I thought of the sacrifice of a living being overviewed by none other than Kurt Mancio's. There was... Blood on the walls, strange symbols, and a dagger in the heart. As soon as I was able to think clearly, I rushed to the police station to report my findings. The station responded to the deposition by... Uh, it's not a deposition. By sending a patrol while the witness left the station and went home. Um, frog wares. Where, where is frog wares? Well, I suppose it doesn't matter because this takes place outside the U.S. anyway. What am I thinking? It's Sherlock Holmes. Uh, deposition is not what is given to the police. Uh, deposition is something... It's, it's out-of-court testimony. So it's uh, testimony for court that's not done... It's still done under oath. It's still done before officers of the court, but uh, not at trial. The provider of this ticket has permission to inspect all evidence on case 6260. And let's get open the file. So I guess we'll do the report. Following a report from witness of a of the satanic ritual who claimed to have found a body, the raid on the Mancio's mansion was granted. It resulted in the arrest of multiple suspects and dispersal of the group in masks and robes caught in acts of gross indecency and unnatural behavior. The body of the victim was found lying on an altar with a knife wound to his chest. The officers identified the victim, Fabio, 20, a local performer and artists. 
Suspects V. Vogel had a letter of an insulting nature in his possession which had been written by the victim, really. He claims to have found the body. He is infamous for his eccentric personality. S. Holmes carried a murder weapon, a dagger with the victim's blood, and other items of evidence. He was invited by another suspect, V. Vogel, presumably to obstruct the official investigation. I mean, yes, that is precisely what they brought Sherlock there to do, which is why I was so <laughs> iffy about the whole situation. K. Mancios, the owner of the mansion and organizer of the satanic party, paid the victim to participate in the ritual at access to the crime scene. Fabio's partner and participant in the ritual tried to escape, resisted arrest, owned a book with a description of the ritual performed in the altar room. Some of the guests are temporarily detained for further questioning, and of course it did not question Santos, as he was their witness and not a suspect, although I disagree. Back on track to solve the case. All right, we got keys to the cells. All right, um, and we can't change in here. So, look, I found Verna. All right, now I can change. Let's get out of this. Uh, well, first, let's change John because the whole. So the other thing is uh, confusing for me. I often think he's an NPC, so let's put him back in his gangster outfit. Uh, and I suppose uh, I too. I too will enjoy the gangster life. All right, Werner is over there. That makes it much easier to spot John. But who else do we have here? There should be several others. Manchios. So one. Okay, he's not down there. Nobody there. Ah. Mangios. Uh, and there's Batista. Um, let's start with Werner, I guess. Quite an interrogation room. Vogel. This is exactly where you belong, my Verna, friend. Are you alright? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. In fact, it's something of a family reunion. My brother spent quite some time in this place himself. You should not be here. I told the police everything I knew, but they refused to let you go. They require proof to free you. No, <laughs> Sherlock. What do you expect? The mighty Sherlock Holmes swans in, tells the officers what to think, and the world obeys? Of course not. Anyway, I struck a deal with the constable, and I've got a free hand in the investigation. I find proof to solve the case for him. He obtains files about my mother's death for me. Well done. If one has the power or will and can act, then one must. I wonder... What the fuck? You couldn't get the now that you're sober, your truth. entire life uh, outlook, you your philosophy has changed. That enabled my freedom, knowing my innocence? Would that not be just? <sighs> yeah, no. A Werner does belong here. And this choice here is exactly why. Um, because he did a wrong thing. He was trying to cover up a murder. There are lines I will not cross, Werner. I will do my best to secure your release, but with proof, not deception. Really? How many white lies have you told on this? None. Night? Why not for me? Why not another? Because you're not worth that it. That is absurd. I can resolve this without compromises. Do not give up hope. All right, let's talk. Um... Let us start with... You know anything about the cufflinks? I'm not supposed to know anything about this. Okay... Um... Let's see, what about Santos? I have learned who told the police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo. Huh? He cleans up our Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. That's it? <laughs> okay, I expect to be able to ask more questions, but okay. All right, let's uh, start with Batista. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. You are Matista, Fabio's friend. 
This body, yes, it's Matista. But it's a mere shell that will die someday. Just like Fabio. To hell are you high? <sighs> Please accept my condolences for your friend. Thank you. I'm just here to ask questions and find Fabio's murderer. It will not bring Fabio back. Observe. Uh, she's got a tattoo here. She did that herself. It's actually pretty impressive. Nervous. Self harms. Former slave. Or, I guess, maybe just into some. Nope, former slave. Same as the deceased. And recent bruises around her neck. Holy shit, okay. I feel bad for her. Uh, Matista, the former and Fabio's partner, has had a difficult life. She was branded and enslaved while still a child. While enslaved, she met Fabio. Hence their similar branding, old scars that were developed for slavery during adolescence. She continues to be haunted by these traumatic experiences. She has a genuine interest in mysticism since she has tattooed her body with occultism symbols. Excuse me. Um... Matista tries to get over her past in life of her performer seems to be an opportunity for her to earn money or disassociated from her body. Matista seems to be pragmatic about her body after years of abuse. She sells herself to the guests who do whatever they want to her. She's not afraid to step over the line. Also, Matista marks her body with ink. What the hell? Uh, this dissociated from her body thing sounds downright I mean that's the absolute least charitable interpretation for all of these um, that doesn't necessarily mean I guess that it's not true but I also would have no reason to believe that she's at all like that it better not be the answer I hope it's the other one Fabio and yourself were slaves am I correct? You have a similar branding on your body. Yes. It was a long time ago. I couldn't help but also notice fresh cuts upon your forearms. The cuts help me to forget my past, to cover the old wounds and hide them. How did you escape? Something happened. One night the master fell down the stairs. I made him fall and he died. We ran away that day. We managed to get on a ship and traveled here, to Cordona. Fabio and I started a new life here. It was very hard at first, but it became better with time. Until today. All right, what about those bruises, though? The bruises on your neck are not self-inflicted. Someone else made them. Some guests can't contain themselves. They even bite, sometimes. It's horrible. Um, thought I saw somebody. Thought I saw somebody in one of these. Can't even get. No, I thought I saw somebody, but I guess not. Okay, then. Um, Mr. Munchies, I presume. Good day, Mr. Manchios. I am Constable Oswald's partner in this investigation. Be quick and gentle. Some of your colleagues are untrained boars. Although I don't mind meeting young officers. The new blood here. If you cooperate in finding Fabio's murderer, there will be no need to meet with the boars again. <sighs> that voice. Furnace, friend? You're the policeman. What a disappointment. Only an undercover agent can scour a ditch full of deviants. I am a consulting detective. Although I'm capable of replacing the entire department through my consultations. 
Sharp tongued, I like it. May I presume this tongue will get us out of this trouble? I would be so indebted and glad to repay you. Nothing's changed. I'm looking for the murderer. That's the only way to get us out of trouble. But it shouldn't take much time, correct? We're all busy after all. Fuck I need to examine this guy. Past. Makeup. Rash exposure to oh, exposure to hair dye. Really? Hmm, yeah, I see it. Punched hands in a hurry, eh? Okay. Um, Kurt Mangios is extremely rich, eccentric, frivolous. He is the organizer of the parties for Corona's elite and, uh, and the owner of the Mangio's mansion. He spends his life in the company of similarly overprivileged people. However, his being sociable in this manner has made him cautious regarding his health. He uses chemicals as a hair dye. Okay. Stickler for cleanliness or... How is this a stickler for cleanliness? He uses hair dye to the point where it harms his skin. And that makes him cleanly. I'm pretty sure it hides his age. It seems like he's wearing makeup and dyes his hair. That seems like what he's doing. You are a little over the top with your use of makeup, Mr. Manchios. Is it so difficult for you to acknowledge your age? Well, Sherlock, that's easy for you to say to an old man when you look as though you are barely 15. But still, it shouldn't be an issue for someone of your status. For people of my age, it isn't an issue, no. But the younger ones can be so afraid of wrinkles and gray flecks. I have to adapt. Such a methodical man who cares for his body but misses the soap under his fingernails. Are you so impatient or perhaps even impulsive? I wouldn't call myself that. Silly little details. If I missed it, it wasn't important. Or rather, it was less important than who or what I was focused on. Okay, tell me about Fabio. What was Fabio like? His personality, his habits? Anything you can tell me? He was the brightest star of my parties. Young, magnetic, and full of energy. I don't even want to mention his beauty. Otherwise, I'll be so... Yeah, you're beside expensive yourself with grief. Champion, I imagine. His performances were flawless. He deserved his payment. Do you think he was murdered because of money? Possibly. What about the other guests? Were they used to opening their wallets as well? I wouldn't restrict my guests from anything. I'm sure Fabio received a few coins from others for his services. All right, tell me about the Mr. party. Mr. Fogel told me a little about your parties, but I would like to know more directly from you. I'm all yours, Sherlock. You have me arrested and locked here with you alone. I'd like to know who you usually invite to your parties. Free minds who are able to leave reality for an evening, who can taste forbidden fruit without prejudice. There is nothing that quite spices up life like these parties, assuming one is old enough and has worked many years for the good of one's country. Oh, all true laborers, I see. Okay, but why Vogel? Why did you invite Mr. Vogel as your special guest? He's a pretty fellow. He's capable of surprising the public. He has a talent for saying words that no one else would wish to either say or hear. I suppose I can't argue with that. He is a free addition to the eccentricity of the party, which is fine by me, as long as it enhances my party. I don't buy it. When, when there was a body discovered, you relied on Vogel's ad advice to hire me. That's more than just mere acquaintance. Tell me more about Boy, I really don't have that much evidence here. Um what about those gold cufflinks? Where's that? Gold cufflinks, where is it? There it is. You bought an expensive pair of cufflinks for Fabio. Were they his price? Or were they a tip for an exclusive show? It was pure business. 
Fabio escorted me a few times. I was merely showing my gratitude. This pair cost a small fortune. You must be extremely grateful, then. Tell me more. You've thrust a knife in an exposed nerve, Sherlock. Yes, he was my protege, and my beacon also. With my experience, and his beauty, we could have achieved anything. I had faith in him. I would have made him. Hmm. Tell me about Matista. You'd better ask someone else. You'd better ask someone else. Okay, can't tell me anything about Matista, okay? Um. You'd better ask tell someone Tell me about else. Santos, then. You'd better ask someone else. That's not something I know much about. That's not something I know much about. That's not something I know much about. Okay. That's not something I know much about. Do you have any there idea is. who tipped off the police to raid your mansion, Mr. Mancios? Of course. It was you. I could even say you Sherlocked me in here. A good guess, but the wrong one. The fellow who did that was Mr. Pinchetti, your major domo. What? Santos? But how could he even know? If he's not the murderer himself, the ungrateful swine, he has dared to besmirch my reputation. Not a very eloquent choice of words. What should I call mm. him then, since he's a snitch? Make him talk, Sherlock. I'm quite certain he knows more about the murder than he has told the police. It's possible, but I need to have access to him first. I could have sworn I saw somebody else in here. Um, Alright, do you have anything to say now? I know I can handle the news. No? Okay. Anybody in here? I really need to interview Santos. I can't just use this statement. Oh, wait. He must be over here in the... Um, bullpen. He wouldn't be in the cells. He's not a suspect. There's people from the party still here partying? Really? Um, none of these guys look like Santos unless this is Santos. Um, well, first let's go back here and do some... Oh my god, we have so many. Um, yes, he had feelings for Fabio. Um... Washing routine. Okay. Um, and she has washed himself after the murder. I, I, either of those are fine, honestly. I don't. I don't believe that. I, so far, I'm leaning towards Mancius, but uh, I really need to get more information. I don't have, I don't have very much during their final smoking lounge. Fabio Beruz Matisse, I suppose that's a possibility. Can I accuse Vogel? Evidence or no? Or Matista was bruised by the guest. I mean, that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, I think Pachetti, I mean, he did have a key, and Mancio does make a good point. How did he even know about the body unless he was either in there or at some point came in and discovered the body, and I don't have any statement from him that real, that uh, seems to indicate that he did or, or would, so I really need to talk to him. All right. Do the case book, then. Okay, um, 
Santos. Yes, I need to talk to him, but I also need to. Could go to the archive. Santos has to be here. Alright, I'm gonna go to the evidence room. I'm gonna go to the evidence room and talk to them about whatever Good they have. Here. Ticket, please, if you want me to help you. Uh, the ticket. There it is. I'd like to check the evidence from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then? Let me see. Ah, oh, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second. I'll bring it to the table. Okay, first things first. A syringe. An emergency kit for boredom. Uh-huh. I guess that's one way to put it. The letter that was found in Vogel's evidence box. Is your mind on the sound? You can't control your bitterness, not around me anyway. For me, it's too great a risk to ignore that kind of behavior. I can be, speak, and play. I can be, speak, and play with anyone I choose. I'm not another Matista. You pay me, but you haven't bought me. Of course, I keep all of our, your generous donations, even though they hardly compensate for your last terrible outburst. I'm leaving you, although Matista will still be around. Okay, so... Vogel and Fabio have a history. Not the time for privacy. Can I look at the journal? There we go. Werner's personal sketchbook. Can I see it? Okay. I do not like Vogel. There's something wrong with him. It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials K.M. in the corner. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. Okay. A handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. Her key to the altar room. Okay. Power of love. Blood and Mandrake. The symbol on the cover is not at all like the symbols that we found. As a matter of fact, none of these symbols resemble any of the symbols we actually found at the crime scene. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. Okay. So this is actually Mancio's book, and this is the ritual. That's not for bedtime reading. This is the book with the ritual that they mentioned. The police found this occult book in Matisse's bag during the arrest. According to the Ex Libris, the tome was taken from Mr. Mancio's collection. It contains illustrations and depictions of a ritual similar to the crime scene. Prepare the naked body of recently deceased, draw symbols of Mars and Venus, and has the power to possess. Use the force of male and female nature. Pierce his heart with a golden dagger to be rid of the blood that does not love you. Draw a symbol resenting your love while waiting for the resurrection. Recite the charm. The symbol was the... Worm the book symbol. describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. Thank you, officer. Okay, I gotta talk to Vogel about the letter. Talk to both Mancios and Matista about this. I gotta find Santos. It says here I can talk to him. I'll talk to somebody. Where the hell? Can I ask you a question? Why don't you ask someone of your own kind? Oh, sh He's not here.
I've nothing to say about this. Um, Santos. Have you considered Mr. Santos Pinchetti as a suspect? The snitch? Have you seen him? I mean, my breath could knock him down. What's so special about him? As a major domo, he has keys that open all the rooms, including the one to the crime scene. Could have testified only to circumvent suspicion, don't you think? We need to question him. Right. I'll send our men to fetch him. Stay here. They brought him in, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to interrogation room number seven. Mr. Pinchetti didn't even resist, our men said. Thank you. Okay. So maybe I did see something before and it was just like a weird artifact. Uh, like his character model loaded but then disappeared. Because it was right over here in seven that I. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just fucking crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I saw somebody standing there for like, like a split second while I was on my way to talk to Vogel. Alright, you two have keys. I recognize the key from the altar room among these. Small note attached to the will says, Santos, my hopeful slug. He begged me to include you in my will, so I did. Here's my latest revision of the will. Kurt. Text of the will. I mean, no, Santos Pinchetti, the major domo of the Manchios Mansion, receives a jar of mustache wax and a salt lamp that he might always remember his caring employer, Kurt Manchios. So, oh, wow. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pinchetti, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness, sir. Everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. Hold still while I stare at you. Sorry, this is some allergy. Okay. Seems like Mr. Manchios is not keeping his major domo in very good uniforms. Seems like he's either cheaping out or himself is having issues with money. I'd also explain that Will, maybe he's putting on a front, making it seem as if he's being stingy, when in reality he has nothing to give. He does have blood on his shoe, though. Okay. Um... Santos Pinchetti is the head servant at the Manchos Mansion. Despite being employed at the highest position within the household, he appears to be poor. His body shows symptoms of psoriasis. Mr. Pinchetti hides his damaged skin under layers of makeup. The Major Domo suit had multiple holes that had been patched up or sewn to renovate the suit's look. Mr. Pinchetti had dyed it. So he's either has financial difficulties or um or he's just cheap. Uh, I'll save you one more personally. Um, apparently he did approach his employer and asked to be included in the will as well. Um. Honestly, the question really comes down to, because this evidence that we just saw could easily go either way. The question is, is what kind of employer would Manchios be? Is he the kind who would pay his employees well? Or is he the kind who would cheap out and pay his employees as little as possible? More interested in the blood on his shoe, but that's not at all, for some reason, what we're focusing on. We're instead focusing on whether or not this guy tries to save a couple bucks or doesn't have a couple of bucks um well i don't see the difference i don't care honestly i don't care you either are way. the major domo of a rich mansion and you seem barely able to afford decent clothing you hide under heavy makeup a skin disease that might be treated with more onerous but less harmful means do you have money troubles 
do not have a lot of means. The pay is below what you might expect. But you could easily change your job if your employer does not meet your elementary needs. One can change his employer, that is true. And the blood on your shoe, where does that come from? I don't actually know. Perhaps from a guest? Mm -hmm. Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always some um, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. So we do know that Mr. Manchios did lavish Fabio with gifts. Maybe there's some jealousy there with the uh, Major Domo, who at least felt like if Manchio was going to spend money, it should be on him. So maybe he is more of a miser. I'm not sure. Let's see what we got. Um, let's talk about... The cufflinks. I know nothing oh? about this. Okay, you don't have an opinion on the gift that he gave him. Okay. Um, let's talk about then... I know nothing about no, this. Talk about the key, okay? Don't expect me to know anything about it. Don't expect me to know anything you about it. I can't ask if you I were know in the nothing about room. this. Okay. Oh, there's uh, six and stuff. Um. I know nothing about this. Yeah. What about the will? Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major donor? I think so. He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Oh. Mr. Manchios flatly okay. refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. And he had the Is balls to bad? come back and tell you, you that you were cut out, above your basically. Head, a salary and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to dye and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. She died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard, and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. Mm, fucking motive While he up wastes the ass, our man. estate's property on decadent parties. He paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship. Yeah, yeah, you're guilty as hell. He's got motive. All kinds of motive. Opportunity. He had the key. Uh, means. He's the major domo. He was probably serving Fabio beforehand. Um, probably brought the wine to him in the room. Yep. <laughs> Still got some other evidence here we're going to follow up on. Um, and... Oh, okay. The letter may have been a form. It's according to the sentence written by the... The letter may have been restituted. Wait, what letter? What? Okay. 
Jenny accidentally stepped in the blood. Um, while discovering the crime scene? That's a possibility, but it seems unlikely to me. Um, I'm sure we'll clean up after the murder, that's what I think. Uh, but Jenny's been forced to work for Kurt Mancius in the desperate hope of obtaining heritage, but it hasn't paid off. I mean, he could still leave. I mean, he doesn't have to be his major domo. He could use his position as Kurt's major domo to uh, do uh, something else anyway. But I understand, you know, why he wouldn't. Um, the letter that was found in Roma's evidence box is your mind unsound. You can't control your bitterness around me anyway. Oh, I see. Maybe it wasn't to Vogel, maybe it was to Kurt Mangius. Okay. Alright. Let's talk to Vogel about the letter, but then let's also talk to Mangius about the letter. Uh, letter... I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Mangius. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Mancios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not, I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for you being on a bender. Touche. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk to Matista about the ritual book. Um, well, actually, first the letter. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchios? Oh, that could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was mm. Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchos? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. All right, let's talk about the ritual book. This book, The Power of Love, Blood, and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. You practice occultism. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection, for fortune, to wash away the ugliness of the world, sometimes to survive. I have the gift and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me. But I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. Okay. Let's go talk to Manchus. Oh, well, first let's do the connections. Uh, ritual brings love back. To the lover. Let's talk about this letter, huh? There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. All right, uh, fine, fair enough. Let's talk about the... Um... Uh, Major Domo, the um, will. Where is the will? You'd better ask someone else. There it 
Santos. I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin with. Where did you get it? Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. <laughs> wow, you're fucking cool. Okay. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. That's not something I know much about. Um... Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. Okay. Vogel took the letter under the influence. Or Machios planted the letter. I don't think he planted the letter. I'm not sure why we would think that. Um, but it seems that that's it. Uh, Santos Pinchetti is the murderer. He's worked for his uncle for years in the deep hope of obtaining his heritage. Magios hostility and humiliations pushed Pinchetti to kill Fabio and frame his uncle. Magios imprisonment would make Pinchetti the only lawful heir. The only way for Santos Pinchetti to right his wrongs was to be rid of his monstrous uncle. Pinchetti should be punished for the crime of murder, but he has suffered enough and deserves a fresh start after a prison sentence. Santos Pinchetti snapped after years of disrespect. Pinchetti devised a plan to be rid of his uncle. However, misery and despair cannot justify murder. Pinchetti is dangerous, and a noose around his neck is all he deserves. Oh my god. Um. Okay. Let's take a second here and back up, because we, st we actually still have more here. The letter from Fabio still has a thing over it. Let's go talk to uh, Vogel about it again, I guess. The air here is rather no. refreshing. Okay. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. Thank you for your cooperation, mm -hmm. Mr. Pinchetti. We'll continue later. Okay, I'm not sure who else we're supposed to talk to. Can we talk to Batista? I know I can handle the news. Um, do we talk to, uh... Do we talk to, uh, Oswald? The letter. This letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Mancios. It's time to free Mr. Vogel. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Mancios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Mancios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. Okay, that's what I expected. Um... Okay. Um, then let's... Go over everything from the top, I guess. Okay, just real quick. We have uh, three competing theories. We have number one, uh, Mancio killed him, I guess, because he wouldn't return his affections. We have Matista killed him because of an occult ritual. Uh, 
want to be rid of the blood that does not love you. This book came from Mr. Man uh, from Kurt Manchio's library, so he could have read this passage as well. Maybe he's the one who conducted the, this ritual. He said he doesn't believe in it, but look at the themes and motifs of his party. I mean, clearly it's more than just a passing fancy or a... Uh, what, did, what, what did he describe it as? A, a window trappings for the forbidden or something like that. I mean, he's definitely into this kind of thing. Although most of the books that we saw were poetry and medieval te texts on botany and stuff. All right, Batista has, she was at the party. She had a key as opportunity. She was Fabio's friend. They had been through everything together. And while he was withdrawing a little bit, she doesn't seem like she was all that, like at the end of her rope, desperate to get his attention. So I don't think she has motive. There's no way that she could have knocked him out with the wine bottle and dragged him onto the altar and then stabbed him. So she doesn't have the means. So she does not... It's not her. Manchio. His motive, he was definitely way too into Fabio. Um, so he definitely has motive. He had a key. So he has opportunity. He does have the means. The other one, uh, Pancetti, has plenty of motive for being angry with Mancio, which could be transferred to Fabio because Mancio was in love with Fabio and was showering him with gifts. So it could just be jealousy, not getting, I mean, not being recognized as a true family member, not receiving his monetary desserts. Um, he had a key, so that's opportunity, he's got motive, he's got opportunity, and he has means, because he was also aware, I th but he wasn't necessarily as aware of the occult symbolism. If the, if the body did not have a symbol on it, then I would say it's more likely Pinchetti, but it had a symbol, and that is specifically mentioned in the text, Blood and Mandrake. I think it was Manchio. If there was no symbol... Or if there was none of the, you know, other... The fact that there's occult stuff, okay, I could see maybe Pancetti doing that or whatever. Also, Pancetti only has blood on his shoe, whereas Manchio had clearly cleaned up quickly and had soap still underneath his nails, so he definitely washed his hands. And the blood symbols in, that were drawn in blood were definitely done with the finger. So, I'm going to go with Manchio. Oh, except in order to do that, Manchio had to have planted the letter on Vogel. Kurt Manchio was heartbroken and panicked and did not mean to kill Fabio. The improvised ritual was a desperate attempt to cover up the crime. A prison sentence should be enough for his harsher punishment is the death of his love. Or Kurt Manchios killed Fabio in cold blood. He staged the crime as a ritual to blame Matista. He planted the letter in Vogel's pocket to avoid suspicion. Manchios has no consideration for the life of others and deserves to be hanged. Oh, okay. So I do think it was Manchios. But I don't think anyone deserves to hang. I don't believe in the death penalty under any circumstances. Any circumstances. So... It definitely wasn't a crime of passion. This was not a spur of the moment, you know, um, losing control kind of a thing. This was definitely a premeditated murder, but I don't believe in the death penalty under any circumstances. So, mm. I 
He doesn't deserve to be hanged, but he does have no consideration for the life of others. This was premeditated murder. I'm going to go with this one, even though it's including the death penalty. Yep. It's a video game. We can hang a video game character, it's fine. This is just not something I would ever normally support in, in any case. The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Mancios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? For what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel, he had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children. You had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust, love, so cruel and painful. And Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchus. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. The young performer played with your emotions. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way you would have liked. You wanted to be loved. Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You struck him, and then you staged the ritual. You planted the letter in Vogel's pocket and attempted to set up Matista. What poppycock? Sherlock, stop this game now. There is no stop word, Mr. Manchios. Relax and enjoy it. I'll pass the remainder of this case to Constable Oswald. He'll know what to do with you. I have a name for you. Kurt Manchios. Is that so? The master of the Sabbath? The man himself. Mr. Manchios couldn't stand to lose control over his lover. A deadly revenge that deserves a proper sentence. I have all the evidence to charge him. A degenerate and a murderer. I'll make a name thanks to that for sure. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered. The discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones. Including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. 
Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. Garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Sherry, it looks like you've almost found what you wanted. All right, then that's where we'll pick it up next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. See you next time.